in a seat. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Glass Table. It's episode six. We are back after round four, and it's been a very, very, very long round of football. It started all the way back in Thursday. We are fresh of Easter Monday, where Geelong genuinely tore apart a Hawthornless Hawthorn, I reckon. But uh, firstly, we'll talk about my lovely friend and co-host, Jared Thomas. Hello, JT. Hello. It's lovely to be back. Um, yeah, this round, like, I love having footy around a lot but first day to monday is a long time <laughs> like, it's, it's a lot of footy um i went to the one today which was good for about quarter and a half <laughs> so, uh, it was it was a good round but i know me and you were both very very happy coming into coming into that uh i've never been more i don't think i'm happy i'm generally astounded like i'm still sitting here i'm just thinking there's no way we won that. There's no way Port Adelaide just bet Sydney and Sydney by two points. And the, they were this close to winning. But Alir Alir has the golden fist. Literally, <laughs> it was like that far. Literally. Goals. Absolutely oh. sensational. And uh, again, we played at the same time. And you guys generally... Do I start believing? <laughs> Is it time? Is it, <laughs> Is it time? time to start believing us? No. Um, <laughs> we'll get to it later, but I, I, well, we played well. Um, there's nothing against how we played, but we've just played against. We haven't played the competition yet. I'll make a big call later during our little thing. Oh, hello. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a big call later. A little teaser for everyone. So, so oh. everyone sticks around. <laughs> everyone sticks around to the, <laughs> to the review. But yeah, um, we'll, we'll see how we go. I'm pretty happy with how we're tracking at the moment. Uh, we say everyone hopes to stick around. Let's hope we stick around because we're doing <laughs> this guy. at a time that uh, we're not very well. We're not well at all, but we'll, we'll get through it. Um, I'm going to change things up this week, Matt. Uh, we'll do the round of you in a sec, but Coach's Award's going to come first. Oh, the Games Award. Yeah. Okay. Pumping it up yeah. a little bit. Let's get some volume um, going, as no, I really Ryan like Russell it. would say. I, I do like that a lot. I like the fact that you've thought of me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, I feel like I'm kind of cheating picking a premiership player in this, but he's not like he's not like a, I mean he's a premiership player obviously, but he's not like a you know out and out superstar. But today didn't didn't see a lot of it. Brad, Brad Close, first off, Ooh. looks beautiful in the long sleeves. I love those yeah. long sleeves so much. Mm-hmm. Secondly. In that like nine goal, ten goal, third quarter, whatever it was, it felt like Brad Close was literally everywhere. Like he just was, he was everywhere. Um, and he's not a bad player by any means, but I'm just saying, like, you know, people are going to talk about Jesse Cameron's, you know, game. They're going to talk about Mitch Duncan. They're going to talk about Danger, Myers, Holmes, all them. Brad Close was unbelievable today. Kick two had 17. Well done, Brad Close. Coach's award for you, my good friend. Yeah. No one quite, uh, quite cl- uh, came close enough. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had that one lined up since you started, mate. <laughs> so, oh, Brad Close, that's the long sleeves do a lot. I love the long sleeves. There's a lot of players that just wear the long sleeve, and it's just real stupid sexy. Vote catcher. <laughs> Vote catcher. They are. Like, let me tell you, like, I came runner up in a best and fairest at full back. Vote catchers, long sleeves. those long sleeves, <laughs> and the yellow, uh, the white boots. Combination yeah. for votes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, very nice. Brad Close. Brad Close is probably up. the best player. Probably the best player in my team. <laughs> well, I watched Charlie Combin on Friday and I was starting to think, hmm, I don't think we're picking coaches awards for him anymore. <laughs> uh, Samson Ryan. Did he play? Well, I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not sure. Watch the game. <laughs> Who knows? Wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, and the other one was Bailey Williams in the same game. Probably also didn't see him too much, but hey, there's some respect for him. Yeah. The dogs won. Um, and now Brad Close. So we'll watch Brad Close next week against the Eagles and see how that goes. And have three touches probably, yeah. <laughs> in the long sleeves and still yeah. caught your eye. So, round four, right? 
we started, as I said, all the way back in Thursday, which feels like a lifetime ago. Age ago. This game feels like it was round one. <laughs> it was <laughs> so long ago. <laughs> it was. And, the well, we predicted it. And this is probably our biggest achievement of the weekend, is the fact that we tipped the Lions to beat the Pies, and they did it convincingly. Comfortably, like really comfortably. They pretty much put the foot down and just did not let him back in the game at all. But as much as BT thought <laughs> Collingwood were close, as much as he thought they were coming back every two seconds, they didn't get anywhere near him in the end. So, no, it was a absolute out-and-out out performance by Brisbane. And I, I literally picked it last week. I said, Brisbane, I'd pick at the Gabba every week and against and away from the Gabba, not a chance. They've beaten the Ds, who we think are pretty much right there for Premiership contention, and the Pies, who also are there for Premiership also contention. There. Both have been beaten at the Gabba. And then they lost to the Dogs at Marvel and <laughs> fought at... <laughs> Which now both of those losses have a bit of credit behind them because the Dogs Somehow. just beat the Tigers... And Port, it's, it's, Port, yeah, well, we'll get into that in a minute. We'll get to that one. Oh, I can't oh, wait boy. to get to that one. Oh, <sighs> my God. Um, yeah, nothing more to take away from that other than we're just geniuses. Yeah, I think uh, if you didn't trust us already, I think you should back us every single time now. Um, and I reckon we start doing some same game multis on the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. JT and Ant's multi of the week. That's <laughs> the multi builder. That's not a bad idea. Just going to put that in the schedule for next week. <laughs> Ideas pot. Friday, good Friday. It was a very good Friday for Carlton Yes. in the Good Friday Appeal, which was a lovely day in general. Very questionable Guernsey choices for both. Well, I North Melbourne, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I'll just do a quick run through. They raised plenty of cash, which was great. But also there was 49,000 people at Marble. 49,000 people. That's the biggest like, crowd they've had as two teams playing each other since the grand final they played in all those years ago. The biggest marble crowd since 2013. And the equal amount of attendance all combined for North Melbourne in 2022. So they had 49,000 at all their games last year in total. <laughs> and they had it in one game on the weekend. It took a long time for you to get that. It was just years of ticking in my brain. It's so late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, um, yeah, besides all those great numbers for North, I lost by 23 points. Yeah. Um, you said this, right? <laughs> Harry Mackay. So, like, Charlie Keanu, unbelievable, kick six. Harry Mackay, kick four. You look at that, you're like, wow, you know, 10 goals between them. They, must, they, they played really well. Harry Mackay. <laughs> Might have played the worst four goal game <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I don't know how to explain it because it looks good. Kick four had 16 touches, took 14 marks. It looks good, but if you watch that game back, it's horrible. Oh, most shocking. of it. And Tucked like that off. goal he missed on the goal line, oh. like, that could oh. be one of the worst four goal games I've ever seen, but good on it. I tweeted it because it was like when you press X too hard playing AFL Evolution. And it goes, see ya. I'm going sideways. That was generally funny. So and I know a lot of people funny. like Harry Mackay. And I like him. I think he's good. But he's when fun. a player does that of his calibre, <laughs> piss funny. There was a few of those this week. There was one was. in the um, the game today. Tyler Brockman running into a pretty much open goal and he missed it to the left. And I was like, oh. Geez. How do you miss? I, I think I was off too. Yeah, well, oh, deserved. If I'm honest, absolutely deserved if you're missing that. That's terrible. <laughs> but um, yeah, ten goals between the big the big dogs, uh, which is a scary sight. Those two are scary. If you get them both, they they finally I think figured it out in that you just can't have them run next to each other. Like just it it seems like common sense. Just put them in different directions. Don't let them near each other. Put a small forward with each of them, and then you're fine. Like it, that's yeah. that should be how it works every time. But for some reason, they weren't doing that in the first few rounds, but they, they definitely figured it out against North, probably because it was against North. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know, tend to get your form right in. <laughs> it's true because they had very small defenders. <laughs> they had no key defenders at they all. They had none. <laughs> do you know how I tipped them last week? Why did you do that? Because <laughs> I didn't realise that they had two key defenders out. 
Logan Mackay both out. If oh. both of those played, they're winning that game. And also if they kick straight. And also many so other factors as well. <laughs> but I disagree, oh, but it's, it's fine. I'm going to bury this tip in the ground. That's arguably my worst tip, I think. <laughs> and I'm never tipping North again. I don't care what Good Friday appeal they're playing in. They can get stuffed. <laughs> Go the Blues. <laughs> um, Adelaide Freo. This yes. is genuinely the stamp on the fact that Freo are trash. Yep, that's the one. I think this is the game that confirms it, doesn't it? This makes it my... Yes. Big deal about Saints beating Freo in round one mean very little now. We <laughs> <laughs> yes. just aren't very good, as it turns out. Yes. Um, they yeah, they got points. Not even close, like ever. Adelaide just had them the whole time. We Shelley, Rankin, Walker, Bill Thorpe. It's and I hate to say it, scary. They're good, aren't they? They're just, yeah. they're just slightly pretty good. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> they're they're cool. finally going to take that step where it's like, it's the team that battles around between 14th and 18th for three or four years and then goes, oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> We're third now. <laughs> third or fourth. I don't think they're that good. I think... No, I'm saying like, that... They're going to constantly be in this spot and then just all of a sudden they're going to skip the whole bottom of the eight situation and just go... <laughs> Show the top. Yeah, they'll do like Freo, what Freo did. They literally went to fifth. Yeah, yeah. literally. And then, oh, yeah. no, no, we'll go back down again because we're shit. <laughs> and we just, we just, Freo. Just, just shit. I never thought I'd say it. <laughs> Freo need Rory Lobb. <laughs> and Griffin Logue. <laughs> they need Rory Lobb and Griffin Logue because, like, their forward line still isn't doing much. Um, their midfield. Fine. Like, Sarong's very good. It, it should be better than it is, though. They've got Sarong and Brayshaw, but they're not doing enough, it seems. They don't have anyone underneath them, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's well, like, they don't, like, where's Amira? Like, he's got the biggest. They're playing Amira half forward and just let him sit around he's, there and do nothing. He's shit. Get rid of the apostrophe in his name. Like, they're, just playing, they're just playing him in a bad spot. Like, put him in the midfield. Just do it. Like, I don't. Whatever. Anyway. Looking at touches, Brayshaw, Sarong, 31, 28. The next best for Frio is Luke Ryan, 22. Yeah. I don't even know what Luke Ryan is. Like, I know he's a backman, but like <laughs> he, he acts like other things. <laughs> These are two first names. Yeah. They're the most two basic first names. <laughs> I know. Luke and Ryan. Luke and Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> It's when you've really got a guy underneath him who doesn't have any names, <laughs> when you've got a guy underneath him who doesn't have any names in Jager O'Meara, and then you've got Luke Ryan. <laughs> the Jager Bob. <laughs> O'Meara with apostrophe. Imagine having an apostrophe in your name. That'd be nice. You could be like Jared T. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking dip. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony A. Lesiani. Oh, oh, really that's work. not as bad. <laughs> Jay, Jared T. Holmes. <laughs> I don't know. Plot. Lost <laughs> yeah, the plot. Anyway, Freo lost. Adelaide good. Adelaide yep. good, Freo bad. Yeah, that's basically I it. I think that's what we take away from that one. Richmond versus the Western Bulldogs. The Dogs have actually won this game by five points. How's this? I couldn't believe it. The Tigers kicked eight goals in the second quarter. And then, and then it pissed down. And they lost. <laughs> I'm so confused. I don't were understand. Dogs, were the dogs watching the first three, like first how many episodes when I just absolutely lambasted them? I reckon they were. I reckon Luke Beveridge just put my clip up in the <laughs> in the team meetings every week. Well, we need to show this one to be footballer up. And prove that we are not bad. We are actually, in fact, good. So, not yeah. good, apparently. Their run out song is literally you saying atrocious over and <laughs> over and over. What are we? Atrocious. <laughs> no, we're not. not Fuck today. you, Jared. 
So yeah, that fucking oh, loss. I can't believe it. I was generally cheering the Tigers home because I wanted to continue the point that dogs are atrocious. It's bad. But now I've re- which they are, but now that I've got to realise that Port play them next week, it's uh, play them in Adelaide Oval though. So true. But I, I am attending, yeah. and we know how that pans out. That's true, but we'll get into the tips later. But I, I don't see the dogs. I don't see the dogs getting anywhere close. But you know what? Good on them. I just think. I think I said this. We said this last week as well. What are Richmond? Yes. What well, are I was they? Just about to say what? What? I don't what know what they team? are. Now they're going to lose Tom Lynch to suspension. Yeah, and they play and also injury as well. He's also getting surgery too. So true. And Jack Graham got injured. Nane Curvis is injured, which means they're oh, going to bring back Soldo. Oh, boy. This is going to be a and, tough few weeks. For, who have they got at Gather Round? Let me. Uh, Sydney, Sydney on Friday night. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Go well. All the best. Good luck. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's. I don't. I don't know what to make of either team. It's very weird that certain teams are performing okay, but not okay. I don't understand, Jared. I don't understand. Either. It's really weird. Um, I I just can't get rid of Richmond. They're the team that's really frustrating me because I don't know what's going on with them. I don't know either. And but it was good to see Dusty back and performing yes. actually pretty good. There's a couple of yes. vintage moments he had, which will probably help in the uh, in the short term for them. But they don't have a lot going. Especially with Lynch out now. Once Lynch is out there, screw it. Tim Taranto, double T. Yes. Can't kick a fucking ball. <laughs> this is P known though. He's always been able to get the ball. He just has no concept. He's like Seb Ross and Taylor yeah. Adams and Adam Trelaw when he was at the dot, whether he was at the pies. Like gets the ball a lot, then kicks to nothing. You're such an elite midfield. They picked up Hopper and Taranto and they've been serviceable, but they're getting smashed in the midfield. And then Taranto's once he gets the ball. Turns it over anyway. Turns it to Rosette, and then you're like, well, all right. Yeah. At least you're hitting something. <laughs> At least you're hitting a target. <laughs> but yeah, no, the Tigers in all sorts. The Dogs probably still in all sorts. And it was an all sorts game. <laughs> They're 11th and 12th. They're next to each other. That's kind of adorable. That's cute. That's cute. Two teams we don't know about, and they're next to each other. At least they're easy to find. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. We're getting through this quickly because we are in all sorts. Yeah, it's late. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, it's all yours. Oh, it's yeah, me. It's all yours. <laughs> St. Kilda, Gold Coast, the Fox footy time slot, which before you go on to anything, it's peaked. We've been saying this every week, the Fox footy time slot We're is generally this. terrible. Every single week it has been terrible. We did it. We did it again. Well, this is another thing that we picked right in that mm-hmm. whichever game was the Fox... First off, we thought it was going to be Sydney Port and it wasn't. Yeah. Um, the Fox footy times lot. As soon as I saw that we were that one, the confidence in us winning went through the roof because <laughs> Fox footy, every single Fox footy Saturday night game is always whatever team is the better team on the ladder will pump the other team. Like it won't even... Not even a worry. Like every yep. single time that's how it happens. So thanks Fox footy for putting us on. Because it got to like halfway through the second, and I think we'd kicked four in a row, and I was like, "All right, game over." <laughs> game. Actually, to be fair, we were texting each other, and literally, you you were stressed. First quarter, we were, both, we were in sync in that we were both stressed for like a little bit, and then I peaked, and I was like, "Oh, we're fine." And you went down, like we we were like this, and we went like that, and then you just. What? <laughs> I had yeah. We'll get to it in a second, but thank you yes. for um, zip. We just we look okay. We look pretty good. <laughs> we I haven't had like a proper test yet. This is my this is my big call, my big prediction mm. um, for the Saints. The next two weeks we play Collingwood <clears throat> in Adelaide, and then we play Carlton at Marble. If we win one of those two, just one, we'll play finals. Just has to be one of the two. If we lose both, I think we're in a little bit of not strife, but we're like not. You know, certain, but I think if we beat one of those two and prove that we're we can beat one of those sides, we'll play finals. You know what? I agree with you. I yeah. think you've got a body of work now that suggests uh, you, you're good enough. Like 
we can Frio, put teams away. We can put teams that are yeah. bad away. And like you had Frio, you had uh, the, dogs. the dogs. Last week was Essendon. Essendon. <laughs> and this week, Gold Coast. They're not terrible teams. Like, Gold Coast just oh, came like, off a win against the Cats. Yes, yeah. That's Essendon and the Gold Coast were pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. The dogs were atrocious at the time, but they're not as atrocious anymore. <laughs> and the Frio's the only they're, outright bad team. They're the outlier. They're really <laughs> bad. They're shockingly bad. But, and like, you just found players. This is what I don't Mitch understand. Owens. Yes, I was Mitch just about to say. Mitch Owens. What the hell? He was like... So we had the three last year. We had Windhager, Naz, and we had Mitch Owens. We had the three like draftees come in. Windhager was like at the end of the year. Windhager was like the big one. We were all like, yeah, like he's he's the star. Naz kind of built as the season went on, but was always kind of in and around. Mitch Owens was the only one that didn't really consistently stay in the side. He was there around one, and then he kind of just like middled in in and out of the side kind of thing. And so now he's getting a full go at it because we don't have any forwards, and he's just like taking off as well. So now we've got three of the ones that we were so excited about last year all dominating. Like that game you had was ridiculous. They had 27 and who? Like, <laughs> this is stupid. That's ridiculous. Stupid for like, me, you've got no steel either. No, nah, we did that without... No, the no Max order. King. I don't know what's going on. What Ross the boss has got in the water down there, but it's some of Michael's oh special stuff. Oh, boy. <laughs> what's well, Ross's special stuff, I should yeah, say. Ross's stuff. special stuff. Like he oh. is pulling out the drink bottles at halftime, and they are playing well. We are, and the only the only issue we have, uh, have at the moment, everyone's saying Jack Evans is playing good, and he is. But he did this last year too. Oh, no, <laughs> just, yes, I forgot about that. Let's just <laughs> let's just remember that Jack Evans also had a form like this last year, where I was like he could make all Australian, and then I didn't see him for the second half of the year. So we just need to just pump the pump the brakes a little bit. <laughs> I really like that you're keeping your level head here, but if people saw you in a chat. It's, oh, <laughs> oh my god! There's a lot of knock knocks going on. Much oh, there's a lot of doors being opened because you're knocking a everywhere. Doors being, a lot of doors being knocked on. Holy shit! Oh, I have seen some knocks, but you, mate, <laughs> how's your fist? The wrist movement. <laughs> it's losing it. Losing all the skin on my knuckles. <laughs> Too much knocking. Uh, but knocking. I will admit, right? So the song goes the Saints Gold Coast game. Everyone goes up, not me. I'm sitting there, KO on my phone, watching Sydney versus Port the last minute and a half. Take us through it. What was going on? I I don't know. <laughs> let me uh, let me paint the picture, right? Because you're at the game, you're watching St Kilda live. It's in front of your eyes. You can see exactly what's happening. I'm at my mate's house. He lives in the country part of uh, South Australia, in Clare, for those that uh, know. I do not his cut, if you're not, then Claire is a little bit further away than from the big tall buildings. <laughs> um, so, and his KO was, oh, it was shit. Like it was buffering every two seconds. Like you would have seen that it would have been two minutes to go in the ports in your game, but his screen would be still five and a half minutes to go. Like it was that shit. So I gave up. The last quarter, I'm literally sitting there watching it on my phone. And they're getting angry at me and I'm just sitting there just like, we're oh, down God. by 20 points. Then it kept up. Like, it was slow, and I didn't really get to see much. And I saw McEntee kick the goal to put us in front. And I'm like, huh, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? <laughs> how? 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 I don't understand. Like, generally, like, Port supporters are going mental on social media. I generally had no feeling. Like, I was just sitting. And then I saw uh, Finlayson kick the I got. I started to get really emotional when... Dixon gave away the 50. Like, my phone went flying. Like, this thing, I don't know how it survived. Oh, boy. Yep. And then Dixon did the amazing ruck work in the middle of the, of the ground. I was like, oh, he's made buck up. Finlayson mm-hmm. kicks the goal, which well, I'm going to touch on him in a second. But generally, the, the raw emotion of me sitting there going, you know what, we're going to lose this, even though we're in front. I just know. <laughs> it it's just knew that time of year. We're losing after the siren again. And you know what? I'm used to it. It's okay. And we all know what happened. Ollie Florent took a mark. And I just sat there and I'm like, oh, yeah. Of all people, it's a nobody, essentially. <laughs> I mean, he's performed really well. And Ollie played really well. Tell, <laughs> but if you asked any general AFL watcher who Ollie Florent who was, Ollie they're Florent? telling you. They've got no idea. 
and he kicks it. And I'm thinking, Good line. Good line. Good line. Close. I closed the phone. I was like, fuck. Slammed it. I picked up my phone after a minute and I see that we've won. I'm like, hang on a second. I saw this thing go through. They've turned something back. <laughs> so I went back, like, okay, on 15 seconds, go back, go back, go back. And I've seen Aaliyah's golden fist. That is. I generally, JT, I don't know how. I don't know what freakish luck came across the SCG, but I'm still stunned. That is like, it was the weirdest thing you could, like, it's the weirdest view for one. So it's the, it's the buddy 1000 angle, which yeah. is gets restricted by that person every single time. Stupid um, people. Perfect line. Like, could not have been a more perfect line. And I did the same thing. I saw him kick it and I've gone, oh my God, they've won. And everyone around me is like, oh my God, like after the side, blah, blah, blah. And then you just see like a crowd of players in the goal square. And then you see all the Sydney guys just stop dead. And all the port just running around. And I'm like, that is not. <laughs> we had to wait six minutes to see the angle to actually concur what Proof happened. That it didn't go over. Yeah. But I was just, you've got to be fucking kidding me. That is one of the craziest finishes. I almost think those sorts of finishes are more iconic than like the the goal after the siren ones because like you're going to think of that face now. Like that's going to be one of those things that you're like, I remember when Oli Florent almost kicked the winner and then it didn't make the distance and everyone fucking lost their shit. Like I, I still can't explain. Like I'm two days out. I said it in the review. Go watch that, by the way. <laughs> Um, you're really, you're really making sure that you do only reviews for the win. <laughs> yeah, see, that's you're looking bad thing. again. That's the thing. Yeah, it looked really bad, and I was, I was out pretty much within 24 hours as well. So it was like, I was say the review was. So <laughs> <laughs> I drove home really quickly Sunday. It was a real quick drive. Um, but yeah, I, I completely agree because now we're just going to look at it and go, "Do you remember when Aaliyah punched the ball away?" To deny a goal, that is some World Cup. Um, yeah, shot. it's like that that Heath Chapman spoil from last year, where it was a draw. Oh, yeah, no, Freeman up by a point or whatever it was, and he like spoils it. And he has the no to not spoil it over. And he spoils it in front of him. You're gonna remember that, like, you remember that all the time. And like, just thinking about like winners that aren't, or like winners that aren't game winners, it's like match winners kind of thing. And like, you think about the Dane Rampy thing where he climbs the goalpost. Like you think of that more than you think of like a goal kind of thing. It's just, it's a weird situation, but it was cool to watch. I, I'm yeah. I don't know, we could talk about it for hours, but I generally just, I'm relieved for Port and I've got that bloody tip right. I said it last we actually week. We did too. We tied. This is we the tied thing. This week oh, that. We did. And that's shit that the fact we're tying after four Again. weeks. That's yeah, ridiculous. Um, but I've, that's two things I've got right about court is the fact yeah. that we'll win round one and we'll beat the Swans. And I still don't know. Although they're probably going the dogs Richmond category. I don't know where we stand, but <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. I'm very happy. Like I'm just it's like, happy just... to win. I don't know what it is about coaches as well. Coaching from the boundary, but Ken Hinckley, oh, you did that for the first time ever. That's He's crazy. Never done that before. I was going to say, Ken Inkley is not a not a coach of the bench kind of guy. No, like, ever. Like Chris Fagan does it all the time. Clarko does it all the time. You never see Hinkley do it. Like, that's crazy to me. It is. Good on him. It's not going to get the extension, son. But hey, good on him. <laughs> I was waiting for the extension news to come out after Portland. Uh, about a hundred thousand Crows fans. <laughs> and there was a lot of other comments from other clubs too, going, "Oh, well, this win gives." Hinkley a contract. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's a one win. Happy days for Port. Um, and you know what? We go into gather round both winners, mate. Look at that. Good Saturday Huge. night. Huge. And a couple of reds. It was a fantastic. <laughs> Sunday. This could be a fly through. This can be an oh, absolute. Yeah. I didn't through. watch any football. Um, I watched Essen JV. Actually, I watched both of these games. How about that? Um, oh. Good. Essendon kicks so many points. <laughs> so 11 goals, many 22. Points. So many points. Um, the only thing from this game that I even want to slightly touch on, Jake Stringer's running barrel. Oh. Gorgeous. Hasn't got as much Just, attention as it should. You Like, first off, running barrels are unbelievably hard to do. Like, oh, yes. Yeah. That is hard. 
and he just flushed it. Like, yeah, flushed it. Unreal, beautiful. That's about all I got from that game. <laughs> oh, I didn't see any of it. I just looked at. I didn't even watch the highlights. I didn't really give a shit to be honest. Did a string on. <laughs> well, Isn't it? it was either the choice of watching Essendon GWS live. Last two minutes of Port Sydney. <laughs> On I know another Tuesday. <laughs> but not the Dons in the top four. Actually, before we go on to the next game, the top four is mm, the most VFL point. thing I've seen. It's so VFL. St Kilda, Carlton, top five, <laughs> Melbourne. Yeah, the top five. Six, you think it's South Melbourne? <laughs> Collingwood, South Melbourne, and the Fruit Tangles, the seventh. Brisbane and then Fitzroy Fitzroy's Fitzroy's eight. Eight. <laughs> but BFL. interesting uh, West Coast Melbourne <laughs> again Nothing. I can I watched this game and everything and I still don't have anything to say about it it was exactly I think I said if the Eagles got within 10 goals that's a win and they lost by 63 so it was close so they didn't really win <laughs> so it was close but no um the Eagles had no one to even like they don't have they were playing with a waffle side. They had no like players. Um and then even their <laughs> veterans aren't very good. <laughs> like Jack no Darling. Players. Jack Darling is n- nothing. Um <laughs> Tim Kelly was pretty good actually. That was bad. But yeah, they're just oh, they're just bad, aren't they? They are it's terrible. Bad. And I love it. Yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> very good to see. Um, I'll just go straight into Monday then, which was yep. Geelong Hawthorne, which was a great game for a quarter and a half. Yeah, great, great first half, basically. Um, thought we were in for another Easter Monday classic, and then I think when the Cats kicked the first two of the third to put them up, I think I was like, This game's over. Like, I think I knew from them, like, as soon as I hit the front, I was like, I think the game's done because then they just more and more and more and more and more and more and kick 10 in the third quarter and then another six in the last or whatever. Um, Jeremy Cameron, man. Oh, he's unbelievable. He, he's the best player in the game. I'll say it again. Care. I've said it before. Yeah, I've said it before. I'll say it again. He's the best player in the competition. Like, by far. I don't even know. Yet. I can't even explain how good he is. Like, even, it was just a point. The point that passed me the most, like, he gets his own ball and then he, He's really good at delivering inside 50. Like, his kicks are so good. And I was just oh, like, oh, my God. Jeremy. So just... cool. And he has that kicking action that just a little bit uncoordinated, but it's beautiful, though. Like Beautiful to many... watch. He was just, like, four marks inside 50. He's just, like, he's just stupid. He's just stupid. He had five inside 50s himself. <laughs> five inside 50s by himself. He's just stupid. Stupidly good. How funny was him running over the umpire, though? <laughs> I fell off my chair. Just quietly, though. Nothing, like, that was funny in itself. Nothing made me piss myself more than when I look up at the screen and it says, Jay Cameron Zero Tackle. <laughs> it didn't really tackle him. It just chested him. him. He bulldozed him. That, that went to the well. tribunal. I thought I he was know. bleeding. Yeah, I don't know if it cut back to the umpire on the broadcast, but he gets back to his corner and he just like goes on his knees. He's just like, oh. was so... <laughs> he's not in a good way that umpire. He's missing oh, weeks. HIA protocol. That's <laughs> funny. Just seeing so... it live too, and he's it's it's quick. Like they didn't show a slow motion replay. <laughs> 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 Him. That, that is the most entertaining thing for this game. It's so funny. Because like this game was nothing other than that. <laughs> no, it definitely wasn't. Like I I napped from half time to three quarter time. I woke up and I thought, what game am I watching? What's happened here? <laughs> Hang on. Am I how long have I slept for? <laughs> I slept for a I year lost... and I'm back at the next Easter <laughs> yeah. 2024. I've had a big nap. <laughs> I've been paid for nothing. <laughs> Episode six of the glass table has taken a year to make. (laughs) Where are you, though? There we go. That's round five. Round four. Round four. Um, Should we go around the glass table? I think we should go around the glass table. We had a very good question 
by this bloke named Ant last week. <laughs> That uh, asked you a very good question, which I still stand was one of the best stories I've heard. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Um, and we asked the question, if you had any player to present your jumper, who would it be? You obviously had Simpkin. Yep. Um, mine was obviously <laughs> Travis Bike. There's no story behind that. It's just, just Travis, Travis Bike. <laughs> I also had another thought. If it was going to be any player in the whole league like not just St Kilda like if it could be anybody I would pick Curtis Taylor because <laughs> I want to get a I want to get a photo with him like the photo we took with Harry Styles and I just want to see if we can look as similar as we do in the photo <laughs> I've got the meme I'm going I'm going to put it up me and Curtis Taylor look disgustingly alike in this one photo and it's just really funny. So now, every time Curtis Taylor comes up on the screen, my mum goes, hey, it's you. <laughs> I'm like, it was bad on Friday. <laughs> I turned the ball over and mum would be like, hey, that's you. And I was like, come on now. <laughs> Curtis Taylor. Curtis Thomas. Jared Taylor. <laughs> Thomas and Jared Taylor. <laughs> it sounds like such a shit couple name. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh, God. Jared Taylor uh, sounds like the name of a lead singer of a boy band. <laughs> Four and a half directions. Please welcome Jared Taylor. <laughs> oh no! Oh, anyway, around the glass table. <laughs> That's got me. Boy band or a really low pick in next year's draft. No, I've got it. He's a B-grade opening bowler. <laughs> and he's like medium. I can he's not... see his name on my cricket. <laughs> I can literally see his name on my cricket. Jared T- J-, J Taylor. Jay Taylor. And he's doing a bit of this. Just a bit of this. On a Saturday at one o'clock, he's really just nipping in. <laughs> he bowls 10 overs in a row because they've got no one else. <laughs> All right, glass table. Glass table. You want to start? Yeah, I do. Cow, our good friend, Cow. This was weird. (laughs) The legendary Josh Bootsma. It's kind of fitting, actually. Josh Bootsma presenting Cow Cummins his... Why are you picking that cow? Cow, mate. Cow. You got something to tell us. <laughs> uh, that's like me getting Daniel Stewart to present mine. <laughs> oh, by the way, Daniel Stewart, if you want to come on, if you're listening, mate, you know, just, it was cool. He's on a pod, needs some more guests. <laughs> if we do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, Jacko's, Jacko's is very funny. He wants Brett Kirk to monologue his jumping face. <laughs> Either that or Zach Foot, who he met at a members' dinner before he debuted. <laughs> Zach Foot, great bloke. I remember Zach Foot. He's a great bloke who spoke to me for ages because no one else knew who he was. Zach Foot, that's unreal. Oh, geez, that's very funny. Ari, David Ellard. David Ellard is such just a nothing. That's nothing. That's niche. I love Randos in that Chad Lamb is handing over the number thirteen or. Clem Smith to give him the 25. Not Fev, not Alex Jeselinko. Clem Smith. Clem Smith. That's yeah. unreal. That's exactly yes. what I was after. That's the one um, I was after. Liam McCullough. Yes, I'm my say. boy Liam. Yeah. Kane Turner. Kane Turner. That's a North. That is the most North Melbourne name. <laughs> Oh, that is very North Melbourne. <laughs> that is Kane very Turner. North. And it's spelled oh. with uh, the Y. The y. <laughs> like, why Kane Turner and it? Curtis Taylor are part of the same boy band. <laughs> <laughs> Two opening models. <laughs> oh, oh. We're building our own bowling attack and our own, um, Going good. Our own boy band. Uh, JJ. Peter Burgoyne was the Samurai Kane Mitchell. We should have done Obscure. We should have done Obscure. Because that's what you did. <laughs> it was so obscure. 
You've gone, oh, yeah, three right. big names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simpkin. Bob Simpkin. <laughs> Give me Simpkin. Well, if you're going to do Obscure, John Butcher. Yeah, it's a classic. It's a classic, isn't it? The most iconic cult hero from Port Adelaide. Port. <laughs> and I probably kick better than him, too. But I digress. <laughs> um, we'll finish up last one. We're compared to Cage Stewart once. <laughs> <laughs> this is why the kid is Taylor. <laughs> That's for me. So don't get there to him one oh, time. You look like him once. <laughs> I did. All the time. <laughs> me and my boy Curtis. Go away there. Curtis, if you're listening. You won't be if you're listening. I'm gonna get him on. <laughs> so and then I'll be like, oh sorry guys, we couldn't get JT on this week. He's just so we, JT. <laughs> we couldn't get him. But we've got Curtis Taylor. And it's just you in a North Guernsey. (laughs) You're giving all the good ideas. You shouldn't have said that one out loud. Cut that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's very funny. I don't like that at all. I like that segment. I like that question. It's good. You can think of another one before. Well, the problem is we've got to come up with another one. No. Someone give us some ideas. Someone message in. Yeah. Yeah. Send your ideas in. Yeah. Um, speaking of ideas and ideas of undressing super sexy AFL players, should we get into it? It's coming next, but I didn't know how we're going to get it. <laughs> Sometimes you've just got to take the different route. Oh, someone cue the music. <laughs> stupid, sexy yeah, AFL players. All right, it's time for Stupid, Sexy AFL Players. It's a segment we talk about the players that are generally underappreciated for their looks, their charisma, and just their overall presentation of themselves, really. Presentation. Presentation. Like PowerPoint, <laughs> except a lot faster <laughs> tapping. Oh. JT, have you got <laughs> <laughs> I do have one. Um, it was like, I like to just, when I'm like, now, for some reason, you've ruined me because now I watch AFL games and I like, <laughs> instead of paying attention, I'm like, you think of that? Yeah, do you really pay attention when they're lining up for goal? You're like, oh. Like, I really just look at their approach and just how they look. You're like, like oh, I'm just staring you, you in the eye. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was creepy. I've got one from uh, sort of earlier in the round, which feels like forever ago. Again, it does. But yeah, I was watching on the TV, thought, good looking man, um, presents himself well, runs around very well, had a good game on the weekend. If um, you say Curtis Taylor, I swear to God. Because <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> if that's tickets, <laughs> I don't know what is. <laughs> Stop believing your own hot in your own height, mate. No, I'm not going Curtis Taylor. Um, <laughs> you will one day. Although I will. <laughs> you're right. I'll drop it one day when you're not expecting it. This is you. you got a random North Guernsey on. Ah, it's the idea again. <laughs> but no, um, played really well, presents himself really well. Uh, very big fan of this player's game, Josh Rochelle. We spoke about him. Like four weeks in a row, but he, um, he look man, isn't he? Yeah, Just, I've, I've, I've really started to like him, and I don't know why. Yeah, actually, no, I do know why. You know how they do the songs after each goal? I think, um, who else was doing that? Tex had Sex on Fire, which is great. Um, Brisbane, Brisbane did it originally, Brisbane, Brisbane did it originally, yeah, but like, but, I love the coast ones, it's good. Rochelle's is the Rocky song. You know how much I love Rocky. You do love Rocky. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, he's, he's made me do a 180. I love Rochelle. Yeah. Continue on. But yeah, um, stupid sexy. That's all i got to say. He's just a stupid sexy man. I it's back to that celebration thing. Yeah, isn't it? What is that, bro? Yeah. Like, like, it's the Tim Cahill. It's the box in the corner flag. Yeah, but he's boxing on the ground. <laughs> Sometimes. Like he's just, beating the living shit out of someone. His box is the air. Well, mine played today. It's a lot of Hawthorne. 
I'm trying I to struggled this week. Yeah. I, I really struggled. Um, mainly because I didn't really want to pick a port player because there was quite a few that really had ticked a few boxes. Alir Alir, namely. <laughs> oh, I should have done Alir Alir. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'm saving my back catalogue. Max Who's Williams. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. I will continue after what you're just about to say. Just saying. Brandon Walker played his first game for the year. And he wore the long sleeves too. So I was <laughs> just... Oh, play. shout out to Brandon Walker. He played awful too. <laughs> he played game. absolutely dreadful. But hey, <laughs> you wore the long sleeves and we were only watching for your presentation. <laughs> and you were good at it, so it's fine. And you were good. <laughs> Tick the box. <laughs> Max Holmes. Max, Max Holmes. Holmes. And I saw by your reaction, it was a little bit of a surprise. There's a lot of hype around this kid. And I've really liked the way he's gone about it. And it was very much heartbroken for him last year before the grand final. Yep. The way he runs, just I don't know what it does. He hits a handball every single time. Yep. And he just... Follows up his own work, and it's just adm- admirable. It makes like, you makes you more attractive in your eyes. Yeah, I like hard workers. <laughs> like a man that really, works. Uh, yeah, I, like, <laughs> I really like a man that gets his hands dirty. Oh, yeah. So, oh, Max Holmes, man. welcome to the tea party that is stupid, sexy AFL players. That's really all my reasoning. I really like it. a serious list. Yeah. I like I'm going to get the list together after round five. We'll do it quarterly and have a look at how we're tracking. <laughs> There's some real names in there. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Uh, r- round five, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Tips. Gather round. Gather, Gather round. round. It's here already. We're all in Adelaide. We're all in Adelaide. That's not English. Hang on. Huh? We're all in Adelaide. We are all in Adelaide. I'm in Adelaide also. Right? Uh, that's what I meant by we're all in Adelaide. But... <laughs> I thought you meant the league. <laughs> well, they, them too, but you're here. <laughs> you're part of that. Yes, yes. So uh, we kick off Thursday night. Adelaide versus Carlton at the Adelaide Oval. Who are you tipping? This game, got, this game just got really, really good. Like, yeah, it did. This game is going to be really good because first off, Carlton cannot play Adelaide Oval <laughs> to no, save they can't. themselves, um, and Adelaide are in form. So, oh boy, I'm very excited. This is a good opener. This is a very good opener. I reckon the crowd will be huge. This going to be a massive crowd. Like I know oh, so many Carlton fans. They're they're like I know so many Carlton fans going. Like, are you going? There's... You're going, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, like, the, like, so many Carlton fans will just rattle them off so they can get their little shout-outs on the last table. <laughs> we've got Brando, <laughs> we've got Jono, we've got Kira. Charles not going, he's going to be in Perth or whatever. But, like, all the Carlton boys are coming down. <laughs> Tori's going to be there. The whole the whole Carlton squad is coming down. Um, it's wild. And um, yeah. Peking, Peking Duck are performing as the official entertainment before the game. That's ironic as well. I don't know what day that is. Though. Yeah, they're the Saturday night. Oh, yeah, okay. So, they're performing... Nice. Obviously, for those that don't know, there's a festival of footy just outside Adelaide Oval at a big park. It was being set up. I drove past it today, actually. And there's a big stage. It's going to be like grand final week where they have the big um, entertainment area. So it's going to be like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, the Peking Duck are performing Thursday night. Yeah, it's huge. Um, just, I have no just idea what it's If I'm being honest, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I forgot we're tipping. I'm wasting time <laughs> because I don't know. Um, I'll tell you, I'm tipping. And I don't know why Carlton fans, they'll probably hate me, but I'm tipping Adelaide. Yeah, okay. I'm, in the interest of being different, I'm going to tip Carlton. That's because... Good, good reasoning. We, I, I, this is very much like a flip a coin kind of deal for me. I have no idea who's going to win this because um, I think Carlton's a better team, but then Adelaide play better in Adelaide and Carlton don't. So I'm going to tip Carlton reluctantly. If they can get Harry Mackay off his suspension, and that brings me up a little bit more. But I'm going to tip it purely in the interest of us being different so that we can actually separate ourselves somehow. Yeah, but you just know there's going to be eight other rounds where we don't separate. Literally. Eight other games. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, just touching on that, you went different. That's I did the same thing with North. Didn't pay off. Yeah. But then Port. Somehow. 
God bless you, Alia Alia. <laughs> and we're one all still. Um, <laughs> yeah, it should be a ripper. Good way to open gather round. Friday right, in Norwood, which is a suburb in South Australia. Yes, I know Victorians. that one. <laughs> I've got that one. <laughs> Do you? Good. I'm glad. Uh, Frio Gold Coast, which is like four o'clock in the afternoon. This is such a waste of a time slot. Five ten on a Friday. <laughs> four forty here. Get it right. Oh, sorry. I forget. <laughs> my bad. Just remember, you're in my state. <laughs> you run Ooh. by our time. <laughs> Frio Gold oh, Coast. Who are you going for? Can I pick Needle? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't even know this game's going to be happening. I'll be at work and I'll just be like, ah, oh, you're playing. Uh, um, <laughs> every time I call the team bad, they seem to win the week after. So I, I, I feel like I want to tip free. But it's not like it's their home game. Nobody's home game. No. So, no, nah, I'm tipping Gold Coast. I'm tipping Gold Coast. Screw it. We're going different. Are you tipping Freo? I'm tipping Freo. Oh, here we go. <laughs> There's two different no. ones. Holy shit. Oh, my God. This round sucks. Um, this looks so hard to do. It, it generally hasn't looked too appealing, does it? <laughs> this is too hard to tip. I know. Um, that same night at the Adelaide Oval, Richmond, Sydney. That's weird, this one. Um, so will I, I said, actually. Yeah, there you go. Um, I think I said it before. I think Sydney's going to win this one. Richmond are weird. And Sydney are good. So. <laughs> tip Sydney. That's caught me off guard. Richmond are weird. <laughs> I'm also tipping Sydney. But yeah. yeah. As much as I'd love, because uh, my mate that I'm going with is a Richmond supporter. Shout out to Jordan if you're listening. You're probably not because your ears are too small. <laughs> uh, Richmond, I hope they win for his sake, but I'm tipping the Swans. Brisbane North in Mount Barker, which... Is another suburb in the hills, JT. That's I know this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, Brisbane North. I'm pretty sure this should be straightforward. Can I pick neither again, though? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the Gabba, so who knows? No, now Barker is like the Gabba. Shit. <laughs> the lights go out <laughs> in the daytime. The moon just shows up. <laughs> I'm tipping Brisbane, but. Yeah, I'm tipping the lines. Um, we're back at the Adelaide Oval, Essendon, Melbourne. This game's going to be closer than what people think. Is I think Melbourne's going to win, mm. but it's going to be closer than what people think. I think Essendon are going to put up a really good fight. Um, Essendon aren't bad at the Adelaide Oval, actually, and they're not. Just, they're just not bad in general, too. <laughs> they're just they're just all right. So it's true. Yeah. Um. Geez, the back to back, like the actual double header, like genuinely, it goes. 4.10 my time. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> but like, it goes 4.10 <laughs> into 7.50. It's a literal, a literal double header. Like, it's just rolling I in. Fear, I fear for the Adelaide Oval surface. I was about to say, I fear for the ground by the time Collingwood St. Kilda play on Sunday. <laughs> generally, <laughs> you got to think, that ground's taking a beating from the concerts at Thursday Tad. All the way through. Yeah. And then Thursday, Friday night, Saturday, back to back. Twice. Sunday twice. And then you'll go Sunday twice again. Yeah, it could be ugly. Yeah. Oh, boy. Watch out for the um, ankle injuries in the Saints Collingwood game. That's all I have to say. Oh, Syndesmosis. Syndesmosis Central, that ground's going to be. Um, so <laughs> Central with a mess. Yeah, that's, how, that's how I said it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're a shambles. We'll get through. Uh, um, Port Melbourne. Melbourne. I'm tipping Melbourne. Yeah, I'm doing the Ds as well. Port Dogs. Yeah. Um, Port, just because I still think the dogs are... I know nothing. So, so poor. Yeah, Ken Ankley coach from the bench. My first port game at the Adelaide Oval this year, would you believe it? Really? Yes. I didn't attend the showdown, didn't attend round one, and attended round two at the G because I'm an idiot. True. Oh boy. Port win. Big crowd. Never tear us apart. Should be beauty. Sunday, Sunday early. I'm not attending this one at all. I'll be there. Geelong, <laughs> West Coast. I can't believe I'm going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to be Geelong because yes. why wouldn't it be? Um, but yeah, that game's going to suck. <laughs> That's a bad. real. I'm sitting there just 
Yeah, especially if West Coast are as like as injured as they are this week, then yeah, it's gonna be a long game. Oh yeah. Uh back at Norwood for GWS Hawthorne. Oh my god. <laughs> what is that game? <laughs> what is that? This is a game that should have been played further out of the country. Oh, my God. Put this one in China. (laughs) 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 Oh, no. We're sending GWS and Hawthorne to Shanghai. Oh, that's an awful okay. game. <laughs> the Giants are going to win. It's an awful game. I'm tipping the Giants as well. Oh, man. Oh, that's got me very good. Uh, and the last one, the top of the, well, close to the top of the table class. First versus fifth, <clears throat> Collingwood St. Kilda. The biggest game of the round, probably. And it's a Sunday, Sunday 4 o'clock. <laughs> Sunday 4.40. Surely the AFL's going to try to change. They won't, but like... No. Oh, um, if you'd have said to me, like, four weeks ago, to do my tips for this round, it was Colin with all the way. Oh. But with our form, and I'm hoping we get Membry back. I don't think we will. But if we get memory back, Collingwood don't have a Ruckman right now. I think we win this game. Uh, okay. I think we win this game. Because I love that. I just, I just glimmers of hope finally. Like, I'm finally getting some sort of hope from us. Do you have that feeling that I had last week? It was like, fuck, we're going to win this game and I don't even want to. I except don't know. Except you want to, but like I'm just there like, oh, fuck, we're going to win. <laughs> that could be St. Kilda this week. I just have a, a slight feeling we're going to win this game. And it's an Adelaide. Yeah. And you're going to be the there. G. Hollywood play well at the G. We play well at Marvel. We play well at Adelaide Oval. We beat Port there in 2020. We beat on to that one, aren't you? Yeah, I am. But I'm so I'm going back a few couple years. <laughs> a couple years. We beat Adelaide there last year. We're gonna be okay, I think. I think we're gonna win. Far out, right, you've almost convinced me to change. <laughs> but I just and I think St. Kilda great. I wanted to do well for you, but I just think Collingwood a little but, bit little they're probably a step too far. Well, Just that little bit. And if you win this game, you're probably in my bracket for genuine contender. But I just want Jesus to see... Christ. That's a scary side, isn't it? Bloody oath. Like, I'm genu- <laughs> St. Kilda, genuine contender. I haven't said that in years. <laughs> That's not a thing you say anymore. If you win this be. game, if St. Kilda win this game, they're a genuine contender for 2023. That's my big statement. But I just feel... I can't quite believe it yet. It makes sense. That's why I'm, that's why I'm tipping the pies. Yep. Okay. And like, I'm not going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, <laughs> they'll, like, wait till we I finish wouldn't. recording. Oh, boy. I wouldn't <laughs> like, I wouldn't, I'm not going to crack it because it's, they're Collingwood. They're very good. Um, I just have a, just a little feeling that we're going to be okay. A little bit. And we'll be there and we will be, Drunk. Well, we're probably going to be side by side the whole weekend, but generally, this will be fun to watch. Oh, boy. Yes, this is a real hangover. We've had two nights of hell, and it's just watching your team play. (laughs) Move! Kick! Kick! Station! (laughs) There's a clip from me on Saturday night. Mason would take some mic right in front of me, and in the crowd in the background, you see me doing the... Yes. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to clip that, that up because that is genuinely funny. <laughs> yeah, you had your Mason Wood on again, didn't you? <laughs> uh, that's cute. Yes, but um, overall, gather round. It's going to be a big week. A lot to look forward to. 
a lot to look forward to with the glass table. Because if all things go well, we might actually, well, we're probably going to do a live episode. That'd be lovely. I'm um, looking forward to it. I've got to remember to pack all my stuff. <laughs> pack my- yes. So do I. And I live literally around the corner. So <laughs> that could be questionable, but oh, keep an eye out for that. Um, I don't know what else. It's going to be fun. Gather around. An okay. extra round of footy. Rural in South Australia. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing we do always. And that's get hammered and watch the footy. It's becoming a weekly occurrence. Oh, boy. Good. Yes. Yes. Good. It's, very, very, it's an occurrence that has to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I need a settle pedal. My bank account does not like it. No, it looks at me and goes, alarm bells. <laughs> oh, panic. <laughs> panic. <laughs> Why do you keep buying these things? (laughs) Why are you back at the same joint? (laughs) What is this thing called Dan Murphy's? (laughs) Oh, by the way, just quickly, I looked at, like, I have a dance card. And I looked online, I was like, oh, look at all the rewards I've got. And it said, like, $99 worth of benefits. And I'm like, hang on. Is this when I have $99 worth to spend? And then I realised, no, no, that's $99 I've saved in discounts. Oh, that's boring. Yeah, that's what I thought. So the cards are not going to be used anymore. Yeah, right. Fair enough. Anyway, that's episode six of The Glass Table. There we go. Have you had fun? We had a great time. We did. How good are we? <laughs> Dire straits at the moment. Dire straits. It's bedtime. It is. It is. It is bedtime. bedtime. <laughs> Way past. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you very much for watching, listening on Spotify, YouTube. Subscribe to The Pair. Not too far away from five thousand i think is the word five yes. subs a whole five, five subs <laughs> five subs and they're all my accounts <laughs> yes uh follow us on socials get around jt the glass table as well and um yeah look forward to seeing us in gather round we'll have plenty of content for you then yes yes okay now we'll go now because we tired okay. bye-bye yeah goodbye <laughs> <laughs> bye-bye <laughs>